grace of the Lord, we did part of it uh, last night, and today we're going to do the remaining part of Colossians chapter 1. I want you to combine the two. Colossians chapters 1 and 2 are extraordinary books. Extraordinary texts of scripture because they focus on the identity of Yeshua. And while Ephesians talks about the body of Yeshua and elevates it highly, Colossians present the head of the church, the bride of the, uh, the groom of the church, and presents him as divine intrinsically and extrinsically. And then talks about who we are in him. And that's why it's such a very important piece of script, you know, text in the, uh, in the Holy Scriptures that we got to know it. So in the night, we pray verse by verse over them. So the whole idea is this season. The Lord wants us to kind of slow down, cool down, and let the word be made flesh in us. Why the polite epistles? The polite epistles contain the master plan of Yeshua for his kingdom church. Remember, there are four types of churches on earth. There's the church of Satan. While men slept, Satan went to sow tears, even when Yeshua was on earth. Matthew 13. Then there's the church of men. The one Paul spoke about also in the book of Philippians chapter 3, you know, where he says that there are people whose God is their belly. They are driven by their ambition, what they want to achieve, money they want to make. That's the church of men. Then the, the third one is the hybrid church, the one that has mixture of all. It puts it all together. You find it all over the world. Hybrid church. You can't say it's Satan's church. You can't really say it's man's church. They even have elements of kingdom in that. Then the fourth church is the kingdom church, which Yeshua himself is building. He came to plant it in the earth rim. In the book of Matthew 13, he came to sow the seed. He came to plant it. He paid the price for you know, with his blood for it, for people to be redeemed from darkness into the kingdom. And then in Matthew 16, verse 18 and 19, he says, I build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That church, the kingdom church, which Yeshua is building, the master plan of it was given to a man called Saul of Tarsus, who was an unbeliever, an enemy of the gospel, and then he went and threw his whole life. He even forsook marriage, forsook having a child, so that he can be found in Yeshua in his fullness. And for his consecration, the Lord just unveiled to him what the church is, what it ought to be doing, how it ought to be running, and brothers and sisters, then the relationship of Yeshua and his church. And men and brethren, we saw yesterday where he was saying, verse 11 of Colossians 1, strengthen with all might according to his glorious power. That's where our strength comes from, his glorious power. It's not what you can do or not do. It's not how much of the Bible you know. Then he says, first he said in verse 10, he says that you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. It was his wish for the Colossians and for us that we might walk worthy of the Lord in all pleasing inside of us. We are conscious of his immanence, his omniscience and omnipresence. And we, inside of us, is pure to the core. If men and brethren, by his grace, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of Elohim. Many people know about Elohim. Religion helps you to know about Elohim. But the kingdom challenges you to know Elohim. Not to know about him, but him. To have a relationship with him that is real. And you come to the place where his will is your dwelling place. His will, Yeshua say when you pray, pray, our Father who is in heaven. Recognize where he is. Hallow be your name. Hallow his name, Yahweh. His name is Hallow. God is a generic name. The Buddhists, you call God, the Buddhists think you are thinking of their God. You call God, Hindus think you are talking about their God. You know, every, God, every religious system of this world will relate to the word God. But when you now say Yahweh, for instance, the Holy One of Israel, El Shaddai, El Gibor, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sikedinu, when you call Yeshua Hamashiach, you know what? The lines fall onto you in pleasant places. Everything falls apart. In some parts of the world, you call the name Yeshua Hamashiach, your head will be slashed off your body. 
That is how the world reacts. They don't care when you say God because they think it's their God. So, men and brethren, he says, we should increase in the knowledge of Elohim. They strengthen with all might according to his glorious power. It is his power that strengthens us unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Can you go through issues and inside of you be able to rejoice? You know, today, when people are persecuted, they begin to cry, they begin to feel bad, offended. What did Yeshua say in Matthew chapter 5? When they speak against you, if falsely for my name's sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Because you are kind of worthy to suffer for his name's sake. Men and brethren, there is no excuse in heaven for any believer to implode inside. Out of anger, offense, rot, packed together inside of us, whatever we don't give to the Lord is going to destroy from within. Let's learn to give him all. Every external thing that is thrown at us, rejection, evil speaking, whatever it is, let's give it to him. Let's give it to him. And let's forgive the people who are speaking, who are doing all manner of things they may not understand, but the Lord knows your heart. That's why what you do in the secret of your heart and of your mind is what counts before Elohim. It's not the external things. And everything on earth will fall or rise on the inner state of our hearts. Especially towards those that want to destroy us, those that want to run us down, those that want to kill us and all those things. What do we do? If we can't behave like him and Stephen, what is our claim to be in the kingdom? Men and brethren, he says, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Anyone who has these three virtues, patience, long suffering, joyfulness, you are going to get through any water. You are going to go through any fire. It will not burn you. Then he said, Given thanks, verse 12, unto the Father which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of saints in the light. Here was gratitude to the Father. There is none of us that came into the kingdom by our own power, by our own righteousness. Our righteousness is like filthy rags before the Lord. We come in because of his grace. So we give him thanks continually. Thanksgiving should be more than petition from our lips. We should learn to be more thankful than more prayer, more asking for more. Giving thanks to the Father, which has made us meet. He made us meet. Is his grace. His grace qualified us when we're not qualified to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Men and brethren, and then he said in verse 13, Who has delivered us from the power of darkness? Last night we told you, it's already done deal. It's not something he would do. He's done it already. Our job in the kingdom, our job is to know, to believe, to appropriate by faith. Count it a done deal. The day he gave up his life at the cross and said, it is finished, and paid the price and bowed his head and gave up the ghost, that day the price has been paid. Whoever is a purchase of the blood is delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. There's a translation. You are no longer in the kingdom of darkness. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter what is in your home. It doesn't matter these dysfunctions stretching to 20, 30 generations all the way to Adam. It doesn't matter if in spite of it all, he redeemed you by election. He chose you in Yeshua before the foundation of this world. And therefore, you are safe. You are secure. Your feet is planted on solid ground. The blood of Yeshua Hamashiach. There's nothing on earth that can stand that blood. The, the blood speaks. You see, blood speaks. The blood of the Lamb speaks over everything. Every adverse situation you can face, there's a blood speaking. Can you see it? Can you hear it? If you can hear it and see it in the Spirit, remember, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of Elohim, which is hear and believe. You can appropriate. We are delivered from the power of darkness. Satan lost us at the cross. And we are translated in the kingdom of his dear son. He is our righteousness. He is our peace. Remember what we are told in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. You know, Elohim has made him to be seen. Who knew new sin? That we may be the righteousness of Elohim in him. That is the exchange of the cross. The exchange, his righteousness from heaven. Our sins from the earth are the cross they met. 
And if you believe, all our sins are thrown on him and all his righteousness are given to us by grace. Men and brethren, in verse 14, in whom, that's Yeshua, we have redemption through his blood. We are redeemed. What is redemption? Redemption is paying back. Redemption is buying back. Redemption, Yeshua took his life and gave it to buy us back from the hand of Satan who was legal here of what Adam and Eve had. When he deceived them, he took their mantle as the God of this world. So when Yeshua came, he poured out his blood to redeem us. He poured out his blood to redeem us from every handwriting of ordinances that was against us and contrary to us. What are they telling you? What is the doctor telling you? Cancer? What is he telling you? Your pancreas is damaged? What are they telling you? These are humans. Do you believe the report of humans? Now I tell you, there's a higher report to believe in, the report of the word of Elohim, by whose stripes you were healed. Can you stand upon that factor of the kingdom? That his word is power. The word of the king is power. Men and brethren, he have we are redeemed from the blood. And the forgiveness of sins is your portion. If you continue in the faith. Now having said that, let's go on to where he now talks about the supremacy of Yeshua again. He says in verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible Elohim? The firstborn of every creature. You want to see Elohim? If you see Yeshua, you see Elohim. He is the image. Hebrews 1 said it. Also, Hebrews chapter 1, right from the beginning, for the first three verses, it tells you about Yeshua is the brightness of the glory of Elohim. That's a mystery. That Elohim chose to be in a human form for the sake of redeeming humans, for the sake of everything he wants to do. He is the image of the invisible Elohim. Don't let anybody, don't let the pseudo kingdom movement tell you that it's not important. Yeshua is not important. You know, preach uh, the kingdom. Don't preach Jesus. What type of message is that? He is the kingdom. He is, is the kingdom. The glory and the power. He is the center and circumference of the kingdom. He is the image of the invisible Elohim. Nobody has seen Elohim at any time. But in the fullness of time, Elohim decided to come in human form, in the form of Yeshua HaMashiach, the firstborn of every creature, to show that through that incarnation and mortality and the ascension, that that was in the circle of life of every human being. We are chosen in Yeshua the foundation of this world. Then we are born into this world at a particular time. When we finish our pilgrimage, if we remain in him, we are going to be translated by rapture or by resurrection to continue. So he modeled it for us. For by him, verse 10, by Yeshua HaMashiach, all things created. All things were created by him that are in heaven, that are on the earth. Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principles or powers, all things were created by him and for him. You need to know why we have this awesome authority in prayer that we can pray and lay hold of the heart of people who are in authority, no matter how great they are, and protect their heart, place it in the hand of Elohim, who will order it as it pleases him. Why? Because by Yeshua, whom we serve, who we represent, were all things created. All things mean all things. I don't care what is it that is coming against you. Every knee shall bow at the mention of his name. Listen, all things that are in heaven, first heaven, second heaven, third heaven, where the throne of Yeshua Elohim is, everything was created by him. You see all this probe they are doing, billions of dollars to spend to go to space. Everything was created by him and for him. Whether the things that are visible you can see with your eye, the things that are not visible you can see with only the giant James Webb telescope that just been launched into the to go and probe, to go and see. Those things we don't see. By faith we see them, we know that the walls were created by the word of Elohim. Every single thing. He is the master artist. He knows them all. And all the constellations, he knows them. All the galaxies, he knows them by name. He knows Orion. He knows Pleiades. He knows. 
He knows everything in the air trip, the ones in the waters. He knows. He knows. He knows what are in the water, the marine world, visible or invisible, whether they be thrones on which people sit, or which demons sit, principalities sit, whether they be thrones or dominions, or principalities or powers, all things were created by him, Yeshua HaMashiach, for him. Remember John chapter 1. In the beginning was the war. The war was El with Elohim. The war was Elohim. All things on earth were by him. And that's the one who is your savior. That's the one who is your king. Men and brethren, he says, verse 17, And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. You can pray on this every day. And bring everything under subjection. By him all things consist. But you know the zinger? It's not who he is, because who he is is already there. You cannot say anything against it. The zinger is in verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence? Listen to this. He is the head of the body, the church. It means where two or three are gathered, he's right there. Yeshua is right here where we are, exalting his name. We are not gathered unto anyone, anything. We are gathered unto him. And right now, he is inside of here, spiritually. He is the head of the body. That's why no man should be promoted or projected. This idea of every little thing you are doing, you put your face, Photoshop face, or you and your spouse on a poster uh, every time. You invite people to come and meet you, meet the man of God. You do billboard, you go to cities. It's a mess, a peculiar mess. You go to the cities of the world. From the time you are driving, you see huge billboards. The face of a man and his wife. The face of a woman and her husband. The name of his church. What he can do. The miracle working power. Solution provider. And you are inviting people to come and meet you. Then in a city, you see about 100 or such billboards invite you to meet different solution providers. Can you imagine what will happen if all the churches in the city will raise banner, Yeshua Jesus is Lord. He is the answer to every issue. Receive him today. And billboard A, B, C, you are not seeing any name but Yeshua. Brothers and sisters, the time has come for us to chalk away our faces and begin to exalt the name of the one that matters. The one who truly is the solution provider. We are nothing without him. Men and brethren, he is the head. He is the firstborn. He is the one that might have the preeminence in all things, starting with his church. Let our lives point to him. Let our ministries exalt him. He said, if I am lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. People are not lifting up. They are lifting names of denominations. And that's why brothers say, we want you to know why we do what we do. You never see an open gate with faces of us or the, or the leadership People are asked to come and meet. You can only see that in terms of when we're explaining who is who inside the program. But the promo, we don't do that. It's this kind of thing. You don't see it in our eyes or anywhere we do because we are nothing. Our job is to sell him. That's our product. That's everything. That's our premium product is Yeshua HaMashiach. Let's all sell him. Brother, sell him. Sister, sell him. And be careful when people invite you to meet a man. That's how idolatry forms. Idolatry forms when an image is exalted, and that's what people are gathered onto. Brothers and sisters, let's go on to be radical about these things. Verse 19, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. What fullness? The fullness of the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The fullness of the power, the fullness of the glory, the fullness of the majesty in Yeshua should all fullness dwell. Verse 20, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him, to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether it be things on earth or things in heaven, the blood of the cross was to reconcile all things. And anything that cannot be reconciled by the blood is wasteful, is wasted. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know that every believer is a potent, extraordinary you know what? Power and force on earth 
Because the blood redeems you. You are redeemed to walk in the fullness of what the blood redeemed you for. Let's stop making ourselves cheap. Cheap members of denominations and organizations and we lose sight of our identity in Yeshua HaMashiach. Every ministry should let people know their true identity in Yeshua. We should not project the church name as much as we talk about Yeshua. Yeshua should be projected. Yeshua HaMashiach, very God, very man, the fullness of the Godhead bodily is in him. That's the one we present to people of the world. That's why we present as solution provider. He is the solution provider, not the minister, not the prophet, not the miracle worker, not whoever, not the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teachers. These are mere vessels through whom he functions. And we must get it right with this order. When we get it right with this order, you know what? We stop all this comparison of human beings with human beings. No, it's no brainer. We simply absorb the reality of what he purchased for us at the cross. Verse 21, and you, you, you and I, that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Some of you, thank the Lord for you, you grew up in church with your parents. Some of us had to stray away, far away, one step and then hell. Then when he reconciled us, when he caught us, we were bad, we were B-A-D, and gone. He said, you who were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now have to reconcile. There are people who cannot understand people like us. When we're in our zeal or, or commitment, they can't understand because we know where we're. We know we are gone. We are gonna. And he stretched out his hand and lifted us from the merry clay. And he, not only that, it took time to begin to process us. We didn't go, yes, the zeal initially began to process us, pluck this out, pluck junk out, pluck this out. And so the excitement is extraordinary. What he has done, and yet he's not finished. He has now reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unfavorable in his sight. If the blood is at work in your life, the purpose of it all is that he will present us unblameable, very holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. That's what justification does. Justification wipes off our record. There's nothing. That's why trying to dig into people's past is absolutely self-defeating. If it's somebody who the blood has dealt with, the blood has purged it, there's nothing. There's no record there. It's nowhere to be found. Because the blood is working to present us holy, unblameable, and irreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, what of I, Paul, and made a minister. Do you know that this is the crunch? That many people, what they do unconsciously is what height they have attained before, before they know it, they begin to fall fall even free fall they begin to fall that when you look at them you can't see who they were 10 years ago five years ago what went wrong they didn't continue in the faith at a younger age or when they were more tender in their work with the lord they learned to let go of things they didn't carry things then suddenly they began to feel important ego came in and anything the ego is bruised and the ego is bruised the ego is bruised so they have so much congested issues in the heart because they refuse to walk in the fullness of the call if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel there's a hope of the gospel that makes us to continue knowing that one glorious morning we shall see him. And we begin to walk in a state where we refuse to let anything or anyone to make us to look away from the hope of the gospel. When the hope of the gospel is latched in you, there's nothing you cannot go through and come out unscattered. If you continue in the gospel, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have had, which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, where I, I Paul, am made a, a minister. Verse 24, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you? 
and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Yeshua in my body, for he, in my flesh, for his body's sake. This is Paul, which is the church. So for the sake of the church, Paul didn't mind whatever he went through. Whatever he went through, I, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of Elohim, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of Elohim. Brothers and sisters, as we walk in our daily walk, we must also recognize there are people the Lord gives a dispensation of the gospel. And it's not just, they're not just preachers. They're not just teachers. They're not just there to take the Bible and, and, and regurgitate it to you. No, there are people is given a dispensation of the gospel to be used as vessels to imp achieve a specific divine objective. It's not about them. They are just vessels. Paul reminded them that there's a dispensation of the gospel that was committed to him. Even the mystery, which had been lay, hid from ages, and from generations, but now it's made manifest to the saints. There's something is coming to. There's a dispensation of the gospel that was hidden before Paul. Verse 27, to whom Elohim would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Yeshua in you, the Messiah in you, the hope of glory. You may have come from a dysfunctional family. You may have come from a background that is totally messed up. No name, no reputation, nothing good to commend it. But you know what? If the blood procured you, purchased you, it has taken you out. You have been plucked out of the kingdom of darkness, conveyed to the kingdom of his dear son. He says, if you continue in it, you are going to come to the place where you understand the mystery that had been hidden from the foundation and that mystery is Yeshua in you, the hope of glory. If it's in you, your past is past. Your past doesn't matter again. Don't let Satan or any human being or yourself to make you fixated on past failures, past dysfunctions and all that. See everything in the light of the glory. Yeshua in you, the hope of glory. If he lives in you, if he guides your life, if he tells you what to do and you do that, you are in a place where you are being prepared for glory every single day. Paul now says, whom we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Yeshua. Paul was a man who had a sense of responsibility towards those he was sent to. And that's the truth for every true overseer. Paul's desire is to present every man perfect in Yeshua. He told the Galatians, I travel, I travel in prayer until Yeshua is formed in you. And he told the Corinthians, I'm watching over you with godly jealousy. Let Satan beguile you as he beguiled Eve. Every true leader watches. He sees certain tendencies in people. He begins to pray about it if they are open. And that's a question. If they are open. Very few people in this generation are open. Very few people will ever be honest to tell whoever is the leader in their life, you know what, please, I want to make it. I don't want to fall by the wayside. Anything you see in me, any tendency, tell me as it is and help me to get it right. Very few people are able to say that. The vast majority, everybody is there, especially in these days of social media. Everybody is there projecting themselves as okay, projecting themselves. Paul says, I am doing everything, preaching, warning, and teaching, preaching, warning, and teaching in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Yeshua. May that be so for every one of us in this generation, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, and that worketh in me mightily. Brothers and sisters, let's be more reflective. That's why every day, you say, take each chapter, like this one, even though I've talked about it, take it yourself. Spend an hour, and all through the day, meditate upon what he says to you. Write down each chapter, what the Lord saying to you, not to other people, to you. What is he saying? Write it down. Is there areas to repent? Is there areas to build up? Is there things to learn? Are there things to hold on to? Brothers and sisters, anyone who does this for these 22 days appointed, by the time we get into 2022, which is Saturday, then for another nine days or so, 
by the time we finish this program, you'll be surprised that the things you used to see, you see them no more. You're surprised at the victory because Yeshua in you, the hope of glory, is the one driving you, propelling you. The one you enthroned in the heart is now ruling through you. That's why 2022 is a year of entering into his rest. Entering into his rest is the year of let brotherly love continue. How can this be? It is when Yeshua is enthroned and then living out his life through us. It's no longer what we do. It's what it pleases him to accomplish through us. We are vessels of honor in his hand. Brothers and sisters, read Colossians 1 today. I beseech you. Then later this evening, we will take Colossians chapter 2 for the night. And then that will lead us into. So Colossians 2, one, most, was one of the most wonderful scriptures also, is the one we are using to cross into 2022. Glory! You know, into the last day, of 2021 and if that will be our experience what is in colossians 1 and 2 the last two days if that will be our experience we'll have leapfrogged into 2022 in the power of holy spirit as colossians chapter 3 which is the scripture for the crossover will show us and by colossians 4 we consolidate on it father in heaven we are grateful what it has pleased you to do by yourself at the cross of Calvary. Thank you for Yeshua, the sacrifice. We, we, we bless you. We who are nobody, we who are enemies, you reconcile by his body through his cross. And today, Yeshua in us, the hope of glory. How awesome. And by the blood of the covenant, we declare into the earth rim today everything contrary to Elohim in the life of saints worldwide, whether in the Pacific Islands or Asia or Europe or Africa or North America or South America or the Caribbean or the Central America, let the blood dissolve every plot of the wicked one, every speaking against any saint, whether inside the body or outside the body, whether in the, in the first or second heavens or in the earth or under the earth in the waters, whether it's words spoken or charms or whatever projected, with the blood of the eternal covenant, we dissolve them all and declare that the people of Elohim are free and free indeed. And everyone who the Lord has kept alive till this stage, we declare that they will cross over into 2022 and they will enter into his rest lord have your way thank you for thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching and we believe you learned something and the lord bless you now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms we have a daily live stream on facebook monday all the way to sunday every day by about 10 30 a.m uk time and that's the same of nigerian time and you it's either apostle george monday to friday uh, to thursday pastor grace uh friday to sunday and then in the evening of sunday we have two sessions from 5 30 to about six after six another one up to seven so please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it we also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that 
the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you again soon.